Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Disco Elysium. In the last episode, we confronted Kaje about her being raped by the man hanged out back. And she said that nothing of the sort happened. That she wasn't even assaulted, and that whatever it was was mutual between them. And that Titus is that was actually, I suppose, jealous. And she had a relationship with at least him as a part of the Harding Boys, so she sleeps around uh, a bit, I suppose. But she was upset that he was hung. Um, right, so we're going to confront the, the Hardy Boys about that. We also got a key, and we're able to get into the back of the Whirling in Rags through this locked blue door. And we found a pinball repair shop back there. There was a pinball game out here in the foyer, and so I guess that, I guess it makes sense in a, in a way. Gart seems interested in the pinball machines, and so we told him, well, we told Gart what was back there. He now seems interested in possibly continuing to fix the pinball machines and use them to help the Whirling gain, I guess, some more uh, prestige, get some more people in the doors, as it were, or, or add a little more life to the place. We're going to tell him, though, about the doomed commercial area and how this is a part of it, as that is what uh, Windwater voted for. Thank you, sir. Let's go ahead and talk to Gart. Can I help you? He arches an eyebrow. Gart, I s there's one thing more I want to talk about here at the Whirling. Another thing. Great. I love those. I have to warn you. I may have discovered that Whirling is part of the doomed commercial area. What? Uh, what? He looks mildly startled. Why would you say that? We're at a completely different address from that whole thing. The Whirling is adjacent to them, and there's also the pinball workshop. The Whirling hasn't always been a hostel. Obviously it hasn't. He takes... he... wakes? A sweeping gesture with his arm. Look at the pre-revolutionary tile work. This is an old, proud building. So what if there was a little pinball hall here before? For 14 years, man. That's how long I've worked here. I've kept this place up through hail and through sleep. Fuck me if some doom ghost... Mm. He steadies his voice. Empathy. He's done a fine job, too. Though he's spoken of the place dismissively before. The hostel was actually very important to him. You really care about the whirling, huh? Yeah. It's slowly growing on me again. It's beautiful, in its own way, especially for this neighborhood. I've been trying to keep it that way. Even if it is a part of the damned Doom commercial area. Aha! So, you finally admit it. Yes, your police skills have delivered. I'm sure you'll get a com commendation. Maybe even a promotion. So who owns this place? Some real estate management company. They never come around here. Just collect money from afar. Honestly, I think some money laundering might be involved. Who named it Whirling in Rags? Well, it sure as hell wasn't a real estate company. It was you. You look surprised. What? It's a great name, I know. Cafeteria managers come up with great names too. It's from a song. A song? Hail Holy Queen by the Turners. Hail Holy Queen of the Sea, he quotes. You're whirling in rags. You're vast and you're sad. A good pick, the lieutenant nods. What about those other cafeterias you manage? What about them, he shrugs. One is a basement dive frequented by chain-smoking communists. I can't tell you how sick I am of Kras Mazov and Ignis Nilsson and all those old ghosts. Logic. You're guessing there aren't that many, many others. Well, good luck to you with this place, then. Luck has got nothing to do with it. He looks to where the hidden room is. I think I need... I need to think about where I'm going to place those pinballs. I have a feeling they're going to help. So if you didn't have anything else to tell me about my establishment, or can we, you know, wrap it up? That's weird.
Okay, sorry, that sentence reads weird to me. I think there's something else I want to ask about. Okay, take care, guard. All right. Oh, that went a little better than I thought was going to be going to go. Still have not leveled. I want to put another point into Encyclopedia next to counter the penalty that we grabbed from that one, um, the derealization. Yep. Well, what should we do? So, oh, I guess let's confront the Hardy Boys with what Klaje told us. It's you again. What is it? Klaze says she wasn't raped. Fuck! The big man's eyes and veins bulge. I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. Suggestion. You've hit a nerve. Titus is furious. No, more than that. The loyal Titus feels betrayed. For the record, she steps in forcefully. Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore. Yes, he did. Nor did he say anything about trusting her. Yes, he did. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He turns back to you. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down. And she doesn't fucking trust you. Yes, yeah, she's crazy, you know, the rat-faced man says carefully. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. Oh, so now now we're playing blame the victim. Is that what we're doing? Cut the bullshit. She told me the truth. Lawman. I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. Physical instrument. His hands become fists. And you went and pushed her. Something breaks in him. He takes a step closer and says, I'm going to fucking Titus Hardy. Elizabeth's voice, Elizabeth's voice rings through the room like a warning shot. Authority. Six. Titus backs off. Fists down, everybody. Physical instrument. God damn, no one tells you to put your fists down. Evrart personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? Perception. Hearing. The room is so quiet, you can hear a pin drop. The rest of the cafeteria has gone quiet, too. Suggestion. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, copper. The tattooed man snaps his fingers to get your attention. We know the dead fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Show it to him, T. He turns to Titus, who's still breathing heavily. What's the harm, right? Here, jerkwad. He slams an audio tape on the table. Listen to this shit, and then come back and tell me the soldier of apocalypse was an innocent man. Logic. This is their last play, this tape. Their story is in tatters, a mess. It might be nice to listen to, but at this point, you don't need to. What's on this tape? What's on it? We call it the Door Gunner Mega Mix. You'll know why once you listen to it. Where'd you get it? You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. So you've bugged them. How? We have machines, he nods. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Understood. You've listened in on their communications. He takes a little note. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Which of you is doing this advanced radio work, then? It's not advanced. The heavy man wheezes. You just hold up in a coop all day, writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Don't put yourself down, Agnes. It's important work. The chief picks his beer back up to offer a silent toast. Yeah, man. You're like a radio genius or something. 
Those notes are in are some in-depth stuff, indexes and shit. Okay, that's enough for now. I'll get back to the investigation. I think Sam would listen to the tape, even if we don't need it. We'd still want to listen to all the evidence. Although, this might be highly tailored or tampered with. And if it was recorded improperly, we probably can't even admit it as evidence. Don't forget your tape, lawman. He pushes a little tape towards you with his giant hand. Compliments of Titus Hardy. Fine, I'll listen to it. You do that, he says, adjusting his belt buckle. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness one day. I'm going to take off now. A magnetic tape acquired from Titus Hardy. It supposedly holds a recording of the Mercenary Task Force radio communications recorded via a de-encryption station. Not a good omen. Requires a boombox to play. Okay, well, I think we can probably buy one of those. Uh, does Liz have anything else to tell us? I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? She crosses her arms. Alright, fine. Good enough. Alright, so... Oh, we still have her we can talk to as well. Well, if we, if we want to listen to this tape, we'll need a boombox. I suppose we should continue to try to gather all the evidence we need for this. So let's head back down, and we'll visit the... Oh, the watch we'll call it guy. Actually, we'll also visit the um, the pawn. We'll visit the pawn shop, and we'll visit the guy across the street as well. I really do want that frog visor. I really, really want that frog visor. But uh, we might not have the money for it anytime soon. All right, let, we'll talk with him first since we're right here. Everything's still cool here, officer. Let's try this. It's uh, we need a, a an eight. We need an eight. Persuade him to give you some money. No luck. No, no need to dress this one up. Just tell him what you want. You, I want your money now. Okay. Something stops. His face suddenly serious. But why, officer? I don't know. It was just the only thing I could come up with in my head to ask you. I need to get money somehow. Ah, uh, yes. Money is very important. The street not vendor nods, dead serious. Are you going to... Are you trying to ask for a bribe? If so, you're not doing a very good job. He looks at the vendor. Sorry, detective. The man grins as if the entire incident was already forgotten. Alright, we need more... We need more rhetoric if we want to try that again. Oh, that sucked. We need some way to realistically get money. Consistently. And we do have our... We're carrying around this little this little object here, which lets us write people up, but I have not had to do so yet. Okay. Oh, there's what we need up right above him, I think. The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented, they stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. Stand on tips of your toes to see more. One especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old st handle on top. A classic boom box that says, Stereo 8 approved. Inland Empire, this is you. Gold and orange, a sunset suite. Shopkeep, this Stereo 8 approved machine here. Ah, is the Harman Walshi W02, made in Vesper, designed in seal. He says, plays all reel to reel formats 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. It's even got a little radio in there. 
it'll set you back 12 real. Can I get a discount on this boombox? A, a police discount? A discount? I do have to keep the lights on, man. It's 12 real. Half light. A man like that in a neighborhood like this? In a rickety house falling into the sea? There's fear in him. Use it to your advantage. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Sam probably wouldn't try threatening him, which is what Half Light wants me to do. We could, though, just try saying this because I don't intend to buy it for four real, but maybe we can get the price down a little bit. If I could get it down to six, I think I'd buy it. Aren't you afraid of masked gunmen, the roof falling in, killer waves, aircraft accidents, bot surgeries? I'll buy it for four real. No, not really. I expect one must change at any moment. But it seems that you are. You almost sounds concerned and seems to weigh your offer. Fine. He nods decisively. Four real it is. Success! S sort of. Whatever gets the job done, right? Uh, thanks for the discount. Man, here's your money for the boombox. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Hey, nice. He's not buying clothing yet. I take it there's a certain day at which point we'll be able to begin selling the clothes that we have. I need to remember what the type- I might need to write down, actually, the types of clothes I possess. Actually, if there's a white check, I should double check every- Oh, I should have checked to see if I have any rhetoric clothes before I tried asking money from the guy across the street. Do I have any- I, just, I still don't know. Do I have any rhetoric clothes? No. Well, let's go ahead and overlook the magnificent looking moat. And I guess we'll use our tape player. This is a reel to reel boombox of everyone's youth. A little banged up, a little chipped, and honestly, not that loud either. Looks cool though. Excels at being carried on the shoulder, allowing you to play audio tape items and blast music into the face of unsuspecting strangers. Alright, magnetic tape acquired from Titus Hardy. It supposedly holds a recording of the Mercenary Task Force radio communications recorded via a de-encryption station. Not a good omen. Requires a boombox to play. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reel is attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. Play the tape. <laughs> You push commencer, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sound fills the air. This isn't Revishal, a man's voice says. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. Another loud screech. Some kind of machinery. The harbor. Kim takes out his notebook. That's the sound of a Klaasvend crane. More static. When this shit is done, I'm going to tear that place up. Soldier Apocalypse style. Kill shit, dogs, and chicken... Kill shit, dogs, and chickens, too. Gonna rent a room, Cordy. A real nice one. This part is unintelligible. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dancer whore upstairs. Do it Le Shim style. Never did get a t that taste out of my mouth. A click. 
then silence. The rest of the tape is empty. That doesn't say he did it. It says that he planned on it. And even then, that's not... He might just be exaggerating. The lieutenant pressed the button marked Arrier on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. We know who Cordy is. Joyce told us that was the leader of this military group. What's Li Shimon? A village on the Samarlin Izoa in Tainin. Glad committed war crimes there. The kind of thing he talks about. You think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the, the tattoos would have an answer. We need to know the story of this man's service. What do you think, Kim? It seemed authentic enough. Probably be courted off their shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. I agree. He also sounded... I can't pronounce that word. In Inebrated. He's drunk. Still. Lieutenant looks at your tape. At the tape. You are familiar with this look now. It's his look of suspicion. It's with the corpse. There's more going on here than we know. What was that at the very end? Silence? End of recording. Who is this Cordy? Cordy could be short for Cornteniel. One of the other mercenaries. The one he was talking to. The third one must be relaying the signal. Okay then, what now? I think we've got a few more questions for Klaje, don't you? He looks around. This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's Friday night. Empathy. The contrast feels chilly. Inappropriate, even. Good day to you, officers. Right, bye. Right, did we fill... I think we filled a white check on this, didn't we? We had... We need visual calculus for that. I like the music. Plus, if I put this on, maybe maybe my videos won't get won't have commercials put on them that or people are forced to watch if they want to watch this series. All right, so we're just gonna walk around for a little bit. Let's see if there's anything else I miss. I don't think there is though. Nope. Okay. I don't really want to spend the money on the visor quite yet, as much as I really, really, really want it, because I simply, now I spent four bucks on this, I don't think I have the money. Nah, we, we won't do so. Oh look, it's the cop who turned me into a bad person. Nonsense. Forced him to out the lady driver. How does that turn you into a bad person? You probably did something good for everyone. This guy's messed up. Alright, and uh, there's no way we're gonna get him to t talk to us now. I guess what he considers a bad person is ratting out someone that he liked. But if that person was, had killed somebody, and very well might because I think that person has our gun, then that's going to be really, really, really bad. Ruins full of snow. No one lives here anymore. So I guess there's still a few people we could talk to. We could double back and talk to about more of the conversation. We could also go back upstairs and talk to Klaje a little more. I think we'll do that next episode. Right now, let's let's go see if we can find out if this other gentleman might have more pieces of the armor set.
Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Let's see. So let's go back over here. Oh, okay. So we can ask him. The, so we're talking about the hangman. The harbor is a prime area of suspicion, by the way. Call me manana. In your opinion, are the dock workers involved in the killing? What a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Oh, how? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. I've already talked about all this stuff. So I think we're allowed back in here. We could talk to Evrard a little more. Let's stop by Measurehead really quick and see if we have anything to talk to him about. I don't think we do. Your race descent has temporarily halted, but you will fall again. The only thing about this mug, he does not so much as glance at the object. This your kind of thing? Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. Physical instrument. Does he strike you as a kind of man who puts mugs into trash? Yeah, he does, actually. Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not their first line of defense. Oh, I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. He looks towards the coast defiantly. In addition, these so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. But you're all part of the union. The Hardy Manlets are on the pay of the company. I answer to the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Seminis. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. Oh crap, there was a box back there. I completely missed it earlier. I somehow doubt that I'll be allowed back there. I'm gonna quick save. Can I walk back here? Darn it, I can't. I can believe this whatever's in there and we're not gonna get it while he's standing guard unless I want to punch him in the throat again and I don't think I want to do that not for just a box we could I guess subscribe to his race theory but I don't think I need to do that oh yeah more things all right let's 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 put this away I suppose More experience points. A giant ass print on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. That would be the big guy. Angus. Take another look at the note. Browse through the folders. Anything interesting? Okay. Nothing else for us there. Already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes you to pick up the handset. I don't know who to call here. Let's try this. We, we have 10 cents we can spare. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Well, before I do that, I'm going to put on my interfacing gloves. It's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. Right now your finger is just drawing vaguely occult patterns in the air. I might try this again use later. Sure, why not? Muscle memory is a tricky thing. Nothing tricky about that. You just do, fail, repeat until it works. All it takes is motivation and practice. So we'll need another point in interfacing to make that attempt.
Okay, we have we have a little more time. I guess we'll go back and talk to Everart. At the same time, it does give me an excuse to look around and see if there's anything else we might notice now up here with our increased perception and so on. We saw a postcard in there, but I don't think I'm interested in that. All around you, great machines in Quinena. Oh, I can't pronounce that. In something. Quinescence, I think. Five more points of experience needed. You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. Open the door. Well, we're not getting in that. Oh, hello. So there's some change here I missed earlier. Ten makes up for the ten cents we used earlier. I wonder if that's new for today, or if something we took allows us to see that that was there now. I guess we'll talk to this gentleman as well. Oh, hey, mister. I need to be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And a lot of folks really did keep coming back. I have some questions for you, if that's not too much trouble, Leo. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, Wisdom withers if not shared. And old Leo is always up for sharing. Where is everyone? The harbor is empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with a confidential look. We're on a strike. The whole union is... You don't have to work when you're on strike, ha! Huh? You haven't worked for two months now. So, no one is working. Not everyone is down there, of course, he chuckles. Mr. Everett's in his office, where he always is, and Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. He pauses to think. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble, and Everett sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. He stops, but seems eager to tell you more. What trouble did Titus and his friends get into? Oh, um... Not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. He smiles and leans closer. Him and the boy stirred something up in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling them to take some time off. Suggestion. Don't go all bad cop on the simple friendly fellow. What, what one of those is bad cop? But what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. That's just how boys are, you know? Another chuckle. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hardies. He looks to you for assistance. Too rowdy. Leo, what kind of fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving and words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who, no, he already switched to a price fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know, just, just cut in there with your questions. I am off, Leo. We level encyclopedia to make up for the fact that we took a hit to it. All right. I'm thinking... I'm thinking either physical instrument again next. Maybe esprit de corpse. Or pain threshold will be next. 
could take another point in the Empire Empathy. I, I basically, I want to try to increase the things I have begun putting points in. At the same uh, at that same time, I will probably want more points in these. We also are all filled up on, in our thought cabinet on stuff, so we may want to unlock another slot for something else. Everard. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. He grins as if nothing in the world bothers him. Authority. Oh, I bet he's still fuming internally due to your no-sitting escapades. He doesn't look... He doesn't like to lose a battle of will. It turns out the strikers were being served an alcoholic brew. I stopped this madness. I don't know what that means, Harry, but I love it. <laughs> love your initiative. Knowing you're out there, keeping things running, lets me focus on the big picture stuff. Don't even tell me what was going on. Alcoholic brew stronger stopped its strike. I'm just going to let you surprise me, Harry. What's in the container that's outside your offices? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. Uh, never mind the container. I rarely do, Harry. I have people for that. <laughs> now, you were saying... I met Joyce, the company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. He just a button on his sleeve. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals. We're all trying to do what's best for Martinez. His smile widens. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I helped you get that nasty body down from the tree. I'm not a jealous guy. Suggestion. Whoa, that's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. Why haven't you let her in to see you, Mr. Everett? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. Volition. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Are you sure? I find it a little odd. I'm just a nice guy, Harry. I wouldn't be where I am now if I wasn't nice. He slams his fist into his hand. Politics is about emotions. And I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. Electrochemistry. Okay, then. Positive emotions it is. You like positive emotions. What happened to the previous negotiator, negotiator Mr. G Gaumont? What do you mean, Harry? The big man sounds annoyed. Nothing. I let him go. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I want him to spend more time with his family. He looks down and sighs. God knows how long he's got left. You call them a midget. Harry! He exclaims indigent. I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. Abruptly, he smiles and changes his tone. Uh, I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Half light. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. Everard, Joyce seems to think the Union is lowballing her. Yes, yes, lowballing, of course. He's suddenly very serious. He's suddenly very serious. 
This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here, but everything's a casino for those rich types. Composure. His expression makes it clear this is childish and irresponsible behavior. Okay, let's talk about something else. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this... He makes an all compassing gesture. Is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture. My singing swordfish clock. He looks around. Uh... Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. Conceptualization. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. Half light. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. Mr. Everett? What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any jolly fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? I am. The man rubs his temple and closes his eyes in pain. You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? He perks up and gets over it in two seconds. Seems like it really didn't hurt him. I trust you. Like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again because I don't want to, because you don't want to wound me. So do what you want, and let's change the subject. Thank you for the understanding. His aunt looks him in the eye. We will continue to do what we must. Oh, you too, Lieutenant. Huh. He chuckles suddenly. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you were never my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. The man quickly replies and turns to you. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? I'm going to leave now, Everett, but we might talk again later. See you then soon, Dibrador. The big man raises his hands in farewell. Just kidding, but not too much. I think we completed another quest. Is what we did. Oh my goodness, look at all the stuff we've done. Holy crap, we're getting a lot done. It's only been, it's, it's only the second day. It's only the second day. Oh my god, we're gonna run out of money and start that probably on day four. If we even live that long. I did, I didn't want to tell him about what the result was. Because we also didn't tell Joyce what the result was as well. Actually, or did we? We told him we found proof. We told Joyce we found proof, but not him. Oh, I don't have that much longer to play, though. Um, is there something else I can do? Okay, I can't bring this up while I walk around. can't ask Measurehead about the guy, the guy's tattoos. That would be interesting to do so, since Measurehead has tattoos himself. And Kim doesn't know anything about them. I guess we could investigate the cursed and do com doomed commercial district a little more. See if there's anything else in there. Any more uh, bubbles that will give us more experience points. I somehow think we're not going to find any more tear around here, either. Hmm. We still have several hours to pass, as well. I guess what we'll do is... We'll just quickly peek at this... Oh, you know what? We have, we have the statue we didn't examine. Let's go look at that. 
I don't think we examined the statue. I know I did it in my first attempt at playing the game, the one where I didn't make it anywhere near this far. So yeah, let's let's go look at look at it. Oh, we also have Kuno we can talk to, I suppose. Let's see if he can tell us more about the armor. And or if he's been there almost every day, he might have seen who took some pieces of it. Oh, we have this gentleman to talk to as well. Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! I'm not really interested in that at the moment. Alright, statue. Hello. Let's go ahead and read about you. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philippe III, the Squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachal, son of Philippe II, the Opulent, father of Philippe IV, the Insane. Abolition. Not a good track record of mental health in that family. Perception. Sight. As you look up, you notice something about the statue. There are some odd indentations on the king's chest piece. What, indent what indentations? What do I see? Something with great kinetic energy seems to have impacted the cuirass around where the heart is. A bullet? Visual calculus. Someone shot him in the heart. Interesting. Lieutenant, has someone shot the king? Pointed indentation. Okay. He cleans his glasses before looking up. I can't see it, but I'll take your word for it. What do you think? Well, Martinez is riddled with bullet holes. This place saw a lot of action during the revolution, but the statue is recently renovated. So maybe a joke? A target practice? Or a political statement? Political. It's a king, and he's shot. Why not? He shrugs. What this shows us is guns aren't too uncommon here, and people still shoot them. Sometimes at kings. He takes a note in his notebook. The king stands high above you, surveying the bay, mute and indifferent to your sightings. Let's try it, we need an 8. What did the king do? What did he do? You have no idea what you did a week ago! How would you know what this guy did many centuries ago? High above you, the king stands triumphantly oblivious to your memory trouble. Alright, th today was not a good day for rolls. We didn't pass any of the checks we attempted to make. Alright, well that'll do it for us everyone, thank you guys for watching. Uh, it's 6.30. When I come back, I may go back to Joyce and get the rest of that reality lowdown. So the next episode will probably just be that. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.